Já que estamos a falar de uh, estrelas neste Encontro Ciência 2017, temos agora a oportunidade de falar com uh, Javier Barcons, foi nomeado em dezembro do ano passado Diretor-Geral do European Southern Observatory, o ESO, uh, vai assumir este cargo em setembro deste ano. O ESO é a mais importante organização europeia intergovernamental para a investigação em astronomia e é o observatório astronómico mais produtivo do mundo. Portugal faz parte deste observatório desde 2001. Professor, um, how is Portugal participation in ESO and how is the country seen aboard concerning astronomical research? Well, I think Portugal is having a very important role at ESO since uh, it joined in 2001. Um, <clears throat> in part, this is thanks to a strategy that was developed a decade, a decade earlier, where ESO and Portugal signed a association partnership. So, 10 years before 2001, there was a lot of activity in Portugal to try to create a very competitive community of, of astronomers that could actually benefit from ESO membership. So that, that worked very, very well, really. Um, today, uh, Portuguese astronomers uh, have access to ESO's facilities. They, they return observing time uh, in, uh, you know, at the same level or even slightly higher than the contribution to the finances of ESO. So they are very competitive. They do very good science, very specially in the field of exoplanets, where there is leading teams in Portugal, so that, that's working very, very nicely. Um, I'm also very glad to see that uh, Portuguese institutes and universities are very engaged in developing novel instrumentation for our telescopes, together with partners in other uh, places in Europe. Uh, so they are participating in, in forefront instrumentation like Uh, gravity or METIS, even instruments for the largest telescope that we're beginning to build now, the ELT, so this Portuguese participation in those instruments. So I think overall Portugal is having a, a very good return out of ESO membership and of course ESO is very proud and happy of having Portugal uh, at this very competitive level. Uh, starting in September, you will, we, you will be uh, leading the European Southern Observatory. Um, ESO is an organization you know well since you've been held in several positions in its committees. What are your main goals and expectations for the cooperation in astronomical research? Well, uh, we have a very important challenge now on the table we have committed to build the largest optical telescope in the world, which is called the ELT, the European Extremely Large Telescope. Uh, we have started to do that. We uh, built the road to the mountain where the telescope will be erected. That's finished. Uh, we have placed the main contracts for the most important components of the telescope, including the largest one, which is to build the dome where the telescope will be put inside and the structure of the telescope, also the optics, the mirrors, all these contracts have been placed with industry. So industry is working towards this, this project. Uh, we expect to have first light of this telescope in 2024. Now we have to do all this and at the same time we need to continue delivering the highest astronomical quality data to the European researchers of our member states. We have to what is today the most powerful optical observatory in the world in Paranal in Chile and we're also operating together with other international partners the ALMA submillimeter array in, in Chagnantor. That's the main uh, output, the main scientific output that we're generating today. We need to keep that working. We need to keep our current telescopes with the best possible instrumentation operating very efficiently and very productively for our astronomers and at the same time we need to build the very large, the, the extremely large telescope. So it's quite of a challenge, quite a bit of a challenge, but I, I'm sure that with the staff that we have and with the support from the governments of our member states we're going to succeed. Professor, this morning you um, talk about uh, science and diplomacy. Um, 
how this work in ESO um, can be uh, see like uh, part of diplomacy? Yeah, well, I think that the very existence of ESO as an intergovernmental organization for almost 55 years now, it's a very good example of a successful exercise of science diplomacy. Um, ESO was created in 1962 because a set of European astronomers pushed their governments to create it. And, and the governments accepted that if they wanted to go large, if they wanted to beat real scientific challenges, they had to get together. So when ESO started, it was only five European member states in 1962. And since then, we have become 15. So there has been a huge amount of diplomacy into bringing all this effort together for the common cause of building and operating the largest telescopes in the world. Uh, so we do science diplomacy every day at ESO and in the other uh, European organizations like, like ours, like CERN, ESA and all the others. And, and that is really important because it allows us to do long-term planning. Having the governments committed into our organization, it helps a lot. We can't say what we're going to do in 10 years from now. That's invaluable. And that's where diplomacy comes into play. Thank you very much for your presence. Thank you.